Hey, good morning and welcome to A Moment in the Word. And today, I'm in a most peculiar place. Today, I'm in a place that we will all end up. But you know what? God put it on my heart that even though we all end up here, we need to be clear and precise on what God has for us and what he wants of us. Amen. So today I'm going to, I'm going to explain my calling. I have an unusual calling. I honestly believe it was a supernatural calling when I got called. And you can laugh, you can chuckle, you could say things. I don't care. A couple of weeks ago, I, I felt a message from the Lord that was impressed on my heart, and I shared it with my pastor. And I was worried about not being a theologian, not being a great speaker, not knowing how to have the, the, the words uh, to preach a great sermon. And I was beating myself up over it. So one night... I'm sleeping, and I had an impression that God was putting on my heart, and I felt him telling me, he says, you know, my calling was like Jeremiah. God said, I have anointed your tongue, your lips, with his words. And I said, yes, Lord. And like Isaiah, I said, I will go if you'll send me, Lord. But you want to know something? He told me to preach what he impresses on my heart and not worry about man. Just worry about what I preach that he tells me to preach. And I shared that with my pastor and he said, that's absolutely right. You preach what God has put on your heart and let God worry about man. And that's what God, you know, my pastor repeated it back to me, what God had told me. You preach what I tell you to preach. Let me worry about man. Praise God. So guess what? That's what I've done. I've gotten to the point where it's like I'm not compromising God's word for man or to be liked or to be praised or a pat on the back. That's not what it's all about. The churches have all become religious the way the churches were in Jesus's time. Filled with themselves, filled with this, that and the other thing. And they've lost sight of the true salvation of what they really had to do. Nicodemus asked the Lord, he said, what do I have to do to be saved and enter into heaven? And Jesus told Nicodemus, he says, you must be born again. You must be filled with the Holy Spirit. You must know me, the Savior. Well, guess what? That's the key important message, whether you're a theologian or a lay person such as myself. We're not here to impress anybody, but to just do God's will and use our lives that his message can get out there. You know what? It's, it's that simple. It's that simple. I'm not a great speaker. I'm not a theologian. I don't have a Bible degree. I'm a regular, ordinary guy, just like the 12 that followed Christ. Believe it or not, just like the 12 that followed Christ. The only educated people that followed Christ in his group of 12 was Paul. Well, not even in his original group of 12. Paul the Apostle was a Pharisee. Highest education you can get in the temple. Luke the physician. He had a medical degree, if they gave degrees. But I don't have any of that. I'm just a normal guy trying to tell everybody about Jesus Christ. I'm just a normal person like you and the next person. But I've got the Holy Spirit in me. And I praise God for that. That's exciting. And I'm praying and right now the Lord has me with a message for the church to get on fire again, to, 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 to wake up, to, to start preaching the uncompromised word. The ministers are wondering, where's our congregations going? The churches are fading out. The people are leaving us because you've stopped preaching the uncompromised word of God. You stopped preaching Christ crucified. You've stopped preaching the blood. 
You've pro stopped preaching living a holy and righteous life, sanctification. You have forgot all that stuff. You're worried about programs and funding and everything that shouldn't even concern the church of Jesus Christ. The churches have become, you get it? My God, get on fire for the Lord like you once was. Do you remember your first love? You couldn't breathe to be away from each other. You couldn't live until you saw each other again. That's the way the church should be with Jesus Christ. And if you get mad at me for that, you need to deal with God. Because God put that on my heart. I am here to tell the church, go back to the roots of what worked. Christ crucified, the blood of Christ, the resurrection, sanctification, living a righteous life through Jesus' righteousness. Okay, that's what worked in the old days. You wonder where they're going? They're starving. You've starved them to death. You've get, you, 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 it's like having a pet and you give him fish food to live on. You need to give them the meat and potatoes of God's word. You need to wake up and go back to what works, period. Uncompromised word of God. Don't worry about the programs and the clubs and the events and this, that, and the other thing. Just worry about preaching Christ crucified every Sunday. Train up disciples and send them forth like the word charged us to do. We're to raise up disciples. Go out and go out and, and raise up disciples is what Jesus told them to do. That's the job of the church. You've dropped the ball. I'm not here to bash a church. I'm here to, to, to edify the church and to tell the church, wake up. You've lost the grips on the handlebars. Praise God. Or we're all going to end up like this in the churches, dead, 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 empty tombs. And you know exactly what I'm talking about if you know God. Other than that, I'm just another crazy, stupid guy standing in the middle of a cemetery telling you, go back to what works. Amen. Stop compromising God's word. Stop compromising his house. Why do we have buildings at churches with men's names on them? Uh, so-and-so's hall, so-and-so's -so, so library. It's like, you know what, why? Because they gave you a couple of thousand dollars? That's God's house, and you're desecrating it by putting man's name on it. You're desecrating it by, by conforming to the ways of the world instead of conforming the world to, your, to the ways of God. Wake up, churches. Wake up. You want to know where your populations are at? They're out there in the world trying to get fed to fill that emptiness in their hearts that you should be filling. And I'm not bashing you. I'm telling you and warning you. And that's the message God has on my heart. Some people are called to preach to inmates in jails. Some people are called to preach to the homeless. Some pre people are called to go in and share and visit with the, the elderly and nursing homes, hospitals, whatever. But you want to know something? God impressed me to tell the churches, get back to what works. That's all I'm here to tell you. I'm here to tell individuals one-on-one -on -one about Jesus Christ. I'm here to preach the gospel to the multitudes if he has me do that. I'm here to tell the churches, get back to what works. You know what? I'm going to do like my preacher told me to do, listen to God. And I'm going to do what God told me to do. I'm going to go out and preach what he tells me to preach, and he'll worry about the people. Anyway, I love you. I praise God for you. I hope and pray that God's love ab abounds around you and just, just wraps, wraps around you. I pray his peace, his joy, his love, and blessings be upon you this day. And may God bless you richly. And may, may God open the ears of those leaders in the churches. Get back to what works, the basics. Christ crucified, the blood atonement. This has been a moment in the word. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it blessed you. And I hope you get it. Do you know the man, Jesus Christ, or do you know about him? Amen. God bless you.